Hello! Hi guys! My name is Tatiana. My name is Angel. And we're the Makers HQ. Okay, quick things before we get this video started. We have 134 people, subscribers, and we're so thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you for yes. continuing to follow us. Yes. And please... It's like and keep subscribing. It's yes. It's awesome. It makes us very happy. It makes us like, oh my God, I can't I know. even. We I, keep, know. <laughs> I keep finding excuses to celebrate. I'm very happy yes. and we're actually very proud and we are very um, pleased that you find value in the video. So if you continue to find value, please subscribe because it just makes us want to do, I mean, we'll still do it, but yeah. of course, like, it's very nice to see of the course. subscribers. Okay, <laughs> so that's the first thing. Um, today's video, which is why we're here, is all about the tips that we have accumulated that we have learned the lessons that we've learned yes uh since we bought a sublimation machine at this point seven months ago mm -hmm. um and so we wanted to share with you before we forget yes you know when you're a beginner you have all those questions and then once you learn everything that you wanted to learn you start forgetting those simple what we at the moment they were super difficult but now they become simple because you know them so we don't want to forget all those questions that we had in the beginning and the same way other people helped us by watching videos we wanted to just you know do the same like all the tips the things that you're gonna need at least in the beginning you know that's that's basically, basically it so yeah. um and just to add if you have any questions please uh, feel free to put them in the comments because we get questions all the time that we just answer in the comments. But if it's anything that's related to being a newbie, because I guess now we're not so newbie, we're not experienced. No, no, but we, yeah, we have, uh, that, and that's what the video is all about. We're gonna show you what we learn. Exactly. Uh, it doesn't make us expert or, any, no. or, or anything less than that, but we're good. Yes. We are like, we have, uh, some experience. Yes, we have some experience under our belt. And so this is what we learned. So let's get to it. Okay, so this is the first uh, tip or the first like, a, it's most, more like a test to see what, because the first question that we had when we first got the machine was what is pressure? Like how much pressure is good pressure or enough? So we watched a few videos and, and we learned like this tiny uh, trick or test that you can perform as soon as you get your machine. So you understand how much pressure you can apply on your uh, designs. May so, I add something of before course. we start? Yes. So, um, and why it's because if you're just starting, you're gonna see sometimes it says like, for instance, um, he pressed this for 30 seconds, uh, at this temperature and I'll say like medium pressure or I'll say light pressure, you know, in the instructions. And so that's why you kind of have to know what the pressure of it is, you know, like how it feels. But also each machine, this machine that we have is with a manual gauge where we have to turn it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're in the front, sometimes they're in the back. It depends, you know, on which machine you get. And the ones that are uh, more expensive, usually they are automatic. So it'll just say like, you know, high, medium, whatever. Um, but in this case, since we manually have to do it, then we had to learn how to make sure that the pressure was at the right um, gauge. The medium, exactly. Yeah. Medium, usually most things that you do will be medium pressure. Yeah. There are other materials from what I know that you really need to apply pressure but in our cases that we do t-shirts we do cardboard we do bags all those tests that we have done is usually uh, medium pressure and what's medium pressure so it's with, with the way we do it is you get these uh, papers right you put them sticking out of the machine so and then you start with the least pressure possible you're gonna see that the, the whole thing is loose like you're gonna see on your handle it's supposed to have a plus and a minus uh, sign so you close it, there is no effort from me closing it. So, and then you can actually see how I pull the paper out of it, see? So now that, that would be 
no pressure or yeah, very, very little, low very pressure. Little, little low pressure. So like this, right? So it, was, it made no effort for you to close the machine exactly. and the paper comes out easily. And the next thing is what I was thinking before is like, okay, but you wonder how, how are you going to know if you, once you put your design inside the machine, it's going to be inside the machine. You won't be able to pull it out to see how much pressure you're applying. So once it's in here, and then, but this test is mostly about your, like, I don't know how to call it. Like maybe your muscle memory, your arm, you have to learn how much pressure you're applying every time for medium pressure. Let's say this one I know is like, like, yeah, and then you closed it easily. Yes. There's no problem. No problem. There so was, you know, you didn't have to put any strength on it. Exactly. Super and if you smooth. put your design at this pressure, you know your your design is loose inside. It's gonna be loose, and that's not gonna uh, be good. So the next thing you do is you just tighten the pressure a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, and then you close it again. Again, not so much pressure, but see now it's tight. Now I feel like it's tight. This would be a medium pressure. Right? That's medium pressure, because if I put it inside again, now I'm pressing a little bit more. But still, I think you can still like put a little bit more of pressure, because if you get like a t-shirt, if you put a t-shirt in there, you're going to need a little bit more of pressure. So this, this will be medium pressure. So you can even pull out the, the papers. And then... And again, it's not difficult to close. It's still comfortable to close, yes. but it's not as difficult it's not as easy as it was when there was no pressure exactly. or very low pressure. It's not like you're going, poop. It's like you can feel the machine going exactly. down. And then, so this is the perfect pressure to me. Mm -hmm. Like every time I close the machine, my arm learned that this, the pressure that I like, the pressure that I need, you know, like this. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's your pressure. Nothing is going to come out and it's, your design is safe and secure under the, the machine. Um, so that's the test, basically. Yeah. To, and then you can add more and more pressure. Well, there is, when you add there is pressure, pressure like if you add, for, for instance, you just have something that is super hard, like usually um, not acrylic, but maybe, maybe a stone. If you have a flat piece of stone or, a, or a wood, wood yeah. you can, and you have to apply a lot of pressure. So you go like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. So you get counter uh, clockwise. Yeah. So. And you'll see it minus less pressure plus yes. more pressure. It's just that they did the handle black and the, the, and the, the tiny signs black. So it's, uh, so here, see, this is insane. So I just want too much. You can even close it or maybe you can, but I don't know what you would put in the machine, see? I don't know what you would put, put in the machine that is going to require that amount of pressure. So there you have it, see? That's a lot of pressure. That's almost like, see? It's crazy. It's hard to close. It's, it's hard, hard to, to close open and it's and hard, hard to, close. to open. So that's, I don't know what would you sublimate in there at that pressure. It's insane. But you know it's a lot. So I guess that's the first tip. That's tip guys. number one. Yes. Now we're off to tip number two. Okay, the second tip is um, about sublimating on top of an, a sublimation. So uh, we did this video, uh, we did this sweater in one of the videos where we wanted to have an existing design that I, I saw that I didn't like the design, it was just a girl floating. And I said, I wanted to add things around her. And so, and also sublimate all different parts of the sweater in order to see what it felt like, like how to sublimate a sweater or a piece in multiple, ple ple um, in multiple parts, excuse me. So we had the design already, which was the girl is a dream bigger. And I wanted to add the stars to it. So what we did is we actually went in and added the stars physically, like of course physically, but like individually on top. And what happened uh, this at the bottom became very much like it spread. And so we were kind of like, we don't know why it spread, but what one of, uh, uh, what somebody said, a comment was that it was because it reheated the sublimation, which, well, the, the substrate, the ink, the yeah. ink mm -hmm. exactly. So that makes sense because 
Uh, sublimation include, involves inks that get heated with the machine and then are pressed into, basically melted into the polyester, right? So they become one. And so we've seen multiple times that if we do something that is um, on the back, for instance, we will have to protect the machine, otherwise the heat will make it transfer, okay? Which is basically our third tip. And so what we decided is that if we would like to um, do a sublimation uh, on top of another sublimation, to maybe instead of doing it directly on top, to do it on the side where we can take the part that is existing yeah. out of the machine and then sublimate. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So that's a little tip that we learned. I mean, the thing is that I'm not mad at this one. I just did see that it spread a few places, particularly in the mm -hmm. blacks. It's and that, it, yeah, it's like, it's weird. It's like it spread. It mm -hmm. just like it spread just very yes. finely. Yes. And so um, that would be your tip. Do not redo on top of an image. Like if you can move it to the side or at least do tests because, you know, tests are always the best way. Yeah. But that being said, nowhere else on the sweater did it do this. And so it really had to do with the fact that it was the part that was reheated where the ink was and it spread. Okay. So now tip number three. And tip number three basically goes with this or <laughs> anything oh, yes. that has anything. a back yes. or, you know, that has a design already on it. Yes. And that is to protect your machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we use usually just a piece of craft paper um, that this, we can... Sorry, but this is also important to tell them what kind of paper we use for uh, anything that um, protects like the machine or yes. The, yes. the fabric, yes. like this, because I have also seen it in the beginning. I'm yes. like, which paper is this? Yes. Because when you put other papers, like even cardboard, everything like tends to bend. Yeah, you know? from the heat and the from pressure. From the heat, but this paper doesn't. This paper stays flat. It gets a little bit wrinkly, wrinkly. like, it gets like this, but that's not, it's, it's not a problem. It can it sustain a lot of, you know, heat. So. I feel like, what's the name of this paper? It's craft paper. It's craft paper. Yeah, but this is specifically the one that is not, um, it doesn't have a coating to it. You know, it's like the one that you'll, yeah, you'll get like Yeah, it's like completely, f yeah, exactly. Looks like, feels like cardboard also. And, but it's a very strong paper and you can use it like, we have this one that is protecting the, the Teflon right here. And not a problem you yes. can just use it forever and um, it's very important also because the thing is that the first time that we did so you see on the plate at the bottom there is a protective um there is like a padding right and the first time that we did this uh when we did a sublimation we were so excited when we when we heat press something we were so excited that we forgot for one of the shirts to uh protect the pad and so i was like all right so let's switch it to the back we did the back and then there was a ghosting of basically the other basically the previous one that we had put was now on the new one and it was just a weird mess it's, we yes. couldn't understand what was happening and yes and that's it goes for everyone or everything that you do let's say like we were saying now you do a design on on the front of the t-shirt and then you need to do one on the back don't forget that this design on the front is going to be on the machine exactly you need to protect also that paper or this that if you have it like naked with no paper you need to protect this because this this the first design that you did is going to transfer to your uh, whatever you have under here and it happened to us many times before. It, we well, had changed this paper like a yeah. hundred times. Now. Exactly. And yeah. we, you, we keep changing it. And that's why craft paper is good because you basically just go in and it's cheap. You buy like a small roll, you know, they sell in whatever. Yeah. And then you just take your design. So if I were to do a sublimation of this, I want to protect my machine, right? So I'm putting it on, on the machine, on the padding. But 
that's messed up because it's going to basically transfer onto the next piece. So protect your machine. Then when I'm sublimating the back, I have no problem because I know that it's going to be protected and I can keep going. I can still go on. And then one step further is to protect the top plate. Basically, there's no step further. Always protect your machine yes. because you can mess up a shirt or you can mess up the substrate. But if you mess up the machine, then it's like it's it's a constant detriment. nightmare because yeah. if you mess up the teflon whatever you uh transfer onto the teflon is going to keep transferring like exactly. forever exactly the paper you can just put it in the Throw garbage out. but exactly. the teflon is going to transfer and transfer so it's better to keep it like this i know it doesn't look like you know it doesn't oh look sexy God. and i hate that i know it's but after a while i was like let's protect the machine mm -hmm. okay? yes yes so then Tip number four, four, cuatro, four. is basically in the same vein. When you're gonna do t-shirts and you have a back, and even if you don't have a back, put a protective, even if it's a piece of paper inside of the t-shirt to protect the back. So basically what you want is you're gonna heat press the front, right? So if it's in polyester, the ink is going to go straight to the back. So by putting a, a piece of paper inside of what it is that you're doing, in this case, it's not so important because it's it's a thick material. Exactly, the sweater is exactly. it's almost impossible that it's gonna go through. Exactly. But, um, but I have you have if you're sublimating like uh, poly uh, shirts and they are super thin. So you're gonna put it's, this. It will. And you through. protect it. That's yeah, it. That's you know, it. always that's protecting it. again mm -hmm. the the. The design, the shirt, and the machine. And always, I think, from what we know, is that every time you protect and you don't reuse it, because once it transfer, you can use it anymore. Yeah, basically, like, we've also the, tried it to be cheap, and then we, we use the same ghosting. paper. Use, we use the same paper for protection twice, and it kept transferring. So Which means don't that. make our mistakes. <laughs> Buy one of those, like you know. Uh, a bag of uh, paper for printing that come like a thousand ba uh, sheets yeah. and use those. The but you can also test because, you know, in our case, we've we've sublimated a lot of t-shirts that were very thin. And so the ink, a lot of ink went through. But if your shirt is thicker, then mm -hmm. maybe it's not going to go through as much or it's not going to, it's really going to be protected. And so test it out. Like always do a test because once you do the sublimation print, once you put that heat press on, you basically have lost a t-shirt. That's you it. You know, like it's not, can't be washed out. It's, no. So it's better, you're better off testing um, the print onto something. And then if it doesn't work, then it's fine. Okay, yeah. so that's that. So we're moving on to the fifth uh, tip or fourth tip? I think it, oh, it's a cuatro, so yeah, fifth. So the next tip is basically if you can, so I came up with this because um, in my background, I do have fashion, um, I do have a fashion background and you do a lot of uh, samples and tests. And so what I thought was instead of constantly buying t-shirts, I don't know if anybody else does this, I don't know if it's a practice in the sublimation world, but instead of buying t-shirts and always testing on t-shirts, to buy fabric that was similar to the things that we wanted to um, sublimate, which is not the easiest thing to do, you know, like if you're daunted, but you could look online and order pieces online. So you would have to see probably a t-shirt fabric, or it's actually a knit fabric, 100% um, polyester, or, you know, a mix of polyester. See whatever your t-shirts are made of, and then you could order that from online. So in our case, we ordered a, I think it's a modal mix. Yeah, that one, I think it's a modal, yes. Okay, so it's a modal mix. And um, we found out that you could print on modal, so we just bought like two, about six, four or five yards of modal, because that's what we had to buy the minimum. And we, we did this one, and then this one, it's a knit fabric that is basically the same fabric that you would find um, for sweaters, so it has the fuzzy interior and like this, right? Mm -hmm. So we do test sometimes on these pieces. So this is on the knit fabric. And you see this is how much you can we get. Have a list, yeah. um, exactly. And so then sometimes we do like tiny tests like this on the corner. Just to see, just because to we see. just oh, need to, sorry, to see. Show. 
like this. You just crop a tiny corner, and this is also like to see um, how the design is gonna come yeah. out. But also the the colors. Yeah. You know, you if if you have uh, these are white, and they can really tell you how strong your colors are gonna be. In case you're sublimating on 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 gray, let's say, and then you just you know you bump the the pressure or the temperature, so you know how the, the colors are gonna transfer. But it's always always good to test before you either ruin your sweater or you end up not liking your, your design. Yeah, which you know? again, at the beginning- It happened. Uh, it happened mm -hmm. and we were just sublimating everything. I know. And I don't regret, but I'm like, no, ooh. And then you have a sweater that has a design that you don't like. Exactly, uh, and that happened. That and I have my tiny story, that. yeah, a tiny yeah. story. My sweater, this one that I'm wearing oh, right yes. now. This one, I did it, I made a design on it uh, with a writing, right? It was big, like this, boom, boom. I wore it like one time and I didn't like it. So what I did, I did, this design is seal screen on it. So I created a black square. I covered it, the writing. And then I just did the map on top. But the thing is that I can still see the, the yeah, design. Yeah, like I'm looking at it right now. I know. And I can tell you the V is here. I know. Because is here, sublimation is, here. is almost impossible to get yeah. rid of. So <laughs> even if you want to cover it, look, it it's doesn't. Still there. And I, I washed it and I did two coats of acrylic on it. Nothing covers um, sublimation. So if you're going to ruin your sweaters, might as well just ruin this. Yeah. And you know, and, and it comes safe. in gray too. You know, it it's, comes in different colors. It's yes. sweater knit fabric that you can find online, no problem. And then in this case, just in case anybody's interested, this is modal. I have to see the exact content because it's not uh, as evident here. But it was basically like this, and it came out perfect. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a light cream, mm -hmm. and it came out perfect. Yeah. So, that's it. Okay. On to the next we'll see tip. The size. Number six. Six. I lost track of how many tips this is, but six. we're at number six. Okay. Um, all right. So this is a quick tip because we can show you. Yes. There and this, all these that we are showing you are videos that we have made before. Yes. And at the moment, we didn't know. And now we know. And now we know. So, and this is... <laughs> This is the most, uh, the, the recent yeah, one, the right? This is the last one, yeah. Um, okay, so this one is all about like what we were saying. If you don't do it on, on, on a piece of fabric uh, other than your own uh, sweater or whatever you're sublimating, this happens. You sublimate and you don't like it and things don't transfer the way you want to and you're just wasting a piece of fabric. So what I, we realize is that when you're gonna sublimate on darker colors, other than gray, like yellows, like blues, not anything that is not light, black is the only color that transfer perfect, like perfectly. They, they, they look good. Black looks good on anything that's dark. So basically, you have to sublimate darker than your color yeah. than the color that you are sublimating you have no choice even if you do red on this it's not gonna look red it's gonna look a mixed orange or a, a like faded you have to get really close to a see that faded red. red yes so if you're gonna do colors like this color i think i went too much i Into was excited well. yeah i was excited about the design and i went overboard with the details and i wanted to put a smoke and it didn't work so see it's mostly black so I guess if you're going to do anything that is not gray, white, or very light colors, uh, the design should be all black. That's my decision now. Or maybe a super dark blue, if any. I don't even recommend but, super dark blue. But nothing that's yellow, no orange, no, no pink, much less red, no. And I actually recommend, if you can, to do not a picture, uh, not a JPEG. Yeah, do, but a, to do a, vector, a, vector. a vectorized uh, design, like the writing here. The writing is cool, it's perfect, no complaint. And then in the design, when you see this, this piece, this, this is vectorized. But and then when you go on the actual design, it's not vectorized. And then you can even see it, it's gone. So that's number, uh, tip number six. Uh, it was a failure almost. He says number well, six. Number six, yeah, and I have to mix it up. <laughs> okay, so the last tip, last but not least. I know. Least but not last. Last but not least. Um, basically, 
We have a video that is all about packaging and printing on packaging, which we love because as artists who also sell our work, um, we're always at shows and at events. Um, we're always needing ways to present our work and we used to uh, silkscreen our work, but then we discovered that we can do sublimation. And so if you can do sublimation on packaging, we do encourage you to try and see different ways like on craft paper, on tissue paper, on boxes, it comes out. But the disclaimer is that it comes out better on paper or cardboard or anything that has a glossy finish. I'm thinking it's like the same thing as a polyester or man-made material finish, right? It comes out better on that than it does on raw type of um, craft paper. So this is a white craft paper. But in this case, what we had said is we could have also put it for longer. So we put this design for the same amount of time as this design. And this one um, basically was not as good even when we were doing it. And this one came out perfectly. And this was months ago that we did this design. Yeah. And this was the second video we made? It was, I think so. And um, on something that's glossy, it holds up way better than something that is not. Okay. Yeah, even the true. boxes that we did, they're still, they still look good, but they look brighter at the beginning. So I think that the glossier the piece, the better it will hold up to the sublimation. Now, do you need to do like a million bags in advance? I'm not sure because if you're doing sublimation anyway, like you should probably just do like as little as possible because you can do them. Um, and if you have an event, for instance, and you want to do, I don't know, like 30, 40, 100 bags, sure, no problem. But I don't know that you would, you should do like this type of thing in advance so much because we have noticed that the pieces we have, like this, have faded more. Yes, yes. Basically, the, the ones that are like uh, raw, I'm gonna call, yeah, exactly they have no, wrong. Yeah, they have nothing on top. Like you can, you can feel it. Yeah. You can feel how this one is like uh, shiny. It's like a photo paper. Yeah, this one feels exactly. like a photo paper. This one is uh, not a photo paper. Like it's a just matte. A piece of, yeah, matte uh, piece of cardboard. Um, and then one last tip I have, which is called uh, ghosting is when you it's not about yeah. this one it's about your machine i don't know if, I don't know if. <laughs> okay so no uh this is a quick tip uh, wait let me close it i'm gonna put a little bit more of pressure when you do your designs on t-shirts anything that you do your design on this this happened to me uh when you open the machine right now you're not always careful you're not always like oh i'm gonna open it like this and go you just open the machine and what happens if if you put a the the piece here and the paper on top and, and you don't stick it what can happen is that the paper because of the the motion and the tiny i don't know wind that the machine creates moves the paper that you were sublimated and then the paper is going to land somewhere else on your piece and that it's going to whether or not it's going to transfer like because yeah. the ink it's if it didn't hot. transfer the whole ink, it's gonna it's still hot. So it creates two designs, one on top of each other. And that's very bad for your design. You don't want that. So I recommend you um, uh, sticking it with that um, heat proof uh, tape yeah. or make sure that you don't really go like this. Boom, because once you go like this, see, the paper will move. Everything will move. And it happened to us like two, three times. Yeah. And now sometimes we're like, no, why am I gonna stick this? Yeah, but, but we were being like silly and kind of like, uh, because also it can happen when, for instance, you take off the Teflon and I've noticed the that sometimes thing. I don't pull it off. I've moved it off and yes. it dragged the paper over. Yes. And so in that case, the ghosting happened. And then I'm like, it took one. It's like, you know, measure twice, cut once. Like you did all that work and then you have just this motion of not cutting the the tape and that you can just take ruin one everything. second exactly yeah. Yeah. and you don't necessarily i've seen some people put like copious amounts of tape like on all corners i don't think you need no. to do that sometimes it's just putting it on top and bottom and side whatever yes. just for it to stay and so that when you take it off you have more control of where the image is especially since again pieces are permanently um you know yes. sublimated exactly. On. so exactly. i think that's important to actually take the time 
to in, do it. Yeah, because yes. in yes. our haste, we're just like, Boof, but it's dumb. Yeah, it, because it, uh, you always think that that's not going to happen. Like, how are you going to move the paper? But you move the paper. Yeah, if, even if you take the Teflon, like the Teflon paper out very slowly, but and then you put your finger under the, the design, yeah. and you automatically move the paper. Yeah, you move the paper. And you get ghosting, which we hate. We don't like it. It doesn't look good, <laughs> you know. Unless, unless you just open your design and you leave it for a minute. Yeah, yeah. well, to dry. I don't know about a minute, but you I know, leave it you for leave it. a few seconds. I know, and you, that's another option. But I just rather stick it, yeah. stick it, and forget about it. So that was a, an extra tip inside the other tip. So yeah, this is an a tip inside and a half, tip. Eight point one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. Yes, that's All it. Right. I see you on the way out. <laughs> Bye. Woo! <laughs> that was so awesome. I'm very happy. It was a yes. very chill vibe today. I mean, it's always it's a so chill cool. vibe with us. Like uh, giving all the knowledge exactly. that we have. Yes. So again, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you don't know something right now that you know you might think that we've been through please please write it in the comments and um we're gonna gather as many questions and like topics as possible to make future videos okay yes. so i guess that's it that's it if you if this video brought you any value you know subscribe like subscribe repeat repeat and thank you so much and we will see you in the next one yep and that's it